Hello and welcome to part one of the lecture for chapter 12. In this chapter, we're going to go over the fourth financial statement, the statement of cash flows. And uh, I'm going to talk about why it's important and how to put one together. And this is a bit more complicated than the previous financial statements that we've covered. So we'll, we'll spend plenty of time on this. So you'll notice here in the learning objectives that I've crossed out learning objective number two. I want you to go ahead and ignore that section. So there are two different methods for doing the statement of cash flow, either the indirect or direct method. And 99.5% of US companies use the indirect method. So I see no reason to teach you a method nobody uses uh, that would just detract from your understanding of the one that matters. So in the part one, I'll talk about uh, really the, th that first part of in the, the indirect method, so about uh, operating activities. Then in the next lecture, I'll talk about investing activities and financing activities, which are a bit more straightforward. And I'll talk about the overall statement and how to work through it. <clears throat> this is going to be a chapter where uh, I'll record multiple different uh, problems, practice problems that I'll do on video, and I would really recommend doing those with me. It, it, this chapter is going to be a bit confusing until you actually start doing them. Okay. So the basic statement of cash flows, the reason it's important is that you could have two different companies, as an example, that have the same exact net income. They're in the same business. You're trying to make a decision on which company you'll loan money to. So at that point, they look identical to each other. Both companies had a cash balance that increased by $50,000 over the year. So their cash came in in the same amount. So that looks fine. So in that standpoint, you would look at those two companies identically. Well, if you have a statement of cash flows that you can look at, you might find that the source of the cash is different in those two companies. Maybe one company generated cash through their activities, through providing products or services to customers profitably. That's how they generated cash. Maybe the other company didn't generate cash. Maybe they used up cash in their operations through inefficiencies or whatever the case was. Uh, but they generated cash by selling off some assets or by borrowing money. So that clearly isn't as good as the first scenario. So this financial statement kind of gives you that more depth of information about where did their money come from and where did it go to? So the statement of cash flows is designed, it divided into three sections. The first section is operating activities. So whatever is involved with making their product or providing their services to customers, that's what we'll look at. The second section deals with investing activities. That is specifically related to buying or selling long-term assets like buildings and machinery and trucks and computers, things like that. The last section is financing activities. That deals with borrowing money, repaying your debts, issuing shares to shareholders and paying them dividends. All of the activities that relate to long-term debt or equity are in the financing activity section. And for each of those sections, we'll detail what were the sources of cash in this area and what were the uses of cash in that area. So what caused cash to go up? What caused it to go down? So this is just another kind of pictorial example of what I was talking about there. So basic sources of operating funds, it's the money that customers pay us for whatever we do for them. And the uses of cash are all the cash that we spend on buying inventory and paying our, our workers and paying our overhead and all of that. Investing activities, we get cash from selling long-term assets and we invest cash in buying new non-current assets. For financing, we receive cash or get cash by either issuing shares of stock or uh, issuing debt, borrowing money. And we use cash in the financing area for buying back stock in some cases, paying dividends to reward our shareholders, and then paying off our debt. So the first section I wanna talk about and here's an example, I apologize. Here's an example of two identical companies, but when we look at their statement of cash flow, we can see that they're 
getting cash from different areas. In this case, Company B is the more sustainable company. Their operations are actually what's producing cash. So the next section, I want to talk about the indirect method for operating activities. And this is the trickiest of the three sections. So, so you're going to have to just kind of trust me here and follow this formula and then we'll see how it works. So we're going to start this section with the company's net income, their bottom line on their income statement. We're going to take step one. We'll add back any expenses that was that were used in arriving at net income, we'll add that back to net income. The most common example here is depreciation. So depreciation expense is one of our expenses that we uh, take into account in arriving at net income, but we don't write a check for that, right? It's just an entry that we make to spread the cost of the asset over time. So it's not a cash expense. So we add that back. And then we adjust for any elements of net income that are going to be covered in other sections. And this is really gains or losses on the sale of assets. So a gain or loss on the sale of assets is going to be included um, in, in, in arriving at net income. So we're going to want to add back the losses or deduct the gains here. So then step three is to add or subtract any changes in current assets and current liabilities except for cash. So remember that current assets are assets that we're going to use up or become an expense within a year or turn into cash within a year and current liabilities are liabilities that we have to pay within a year. So I want to look at all of those accounts on my balance sheet and I want to look at the beginning and ending balance of those accounts. So the end of last year and the end of this year, how did it change? And I'll explain the rules and then I'll show you a way to kind of remember them more easily. So I would deduct any increase in a non-cash current asset from my net income. And if you think about that logically, if I start the year with zero in accounts receivable, that's a current asset. And over the course of the year, I make sales of $100,000. Well, if I end with my receivables at zero, then there's no impact on my cash. I got 100,000 in cash. But if at the end of the year, I have $20,000 in accounts receivable, so I started at zero, I end at 20, but I sold $100,000 worth of stuff, that increase of $20,000 has a negative impact on our cash flow. It means that of the 100,000 I sold, I only received 80,000 in cash. So that increase has a negative impact. For the same token, a decrease would have a positive impact. It would mean I collected some of the money from last year plus all of what I sold this year. So the effect on liabilities is the opposite of that. So if I have a decrease in liability, I deduct that from my cash flow because or from my net income and arriving at cash flow because not only did I pay this year's bills, but I paid some of last year's liabilities as well. And then the inverse of that, I add an increase in current liabilities. So the way to remember that is to do this cheat sheet, okay? So I've got across the top there, what happens if the account increases? What happens if it decreases? And for current assets, an increase is a negative impact on cash flow, a decrease is a positive impact, and the reverse of that for current liability. So I would definitely have this page in your lecture notes handy when you do the quiz for this chapter and the test at the end of the semester because that'll, that'll definitely be something you'll want to refer to. I write this down in the corner of my paper when I'm going to do one of these. So, so here's an example. We start with net income of $108,000. I add back the depreciation. I subtract the gain on the sale of land. Okay. And then in this case, I had an increase in accounts receivable. So maybe my receivables went from 100,000 to 109. So they went up. Then I would record 9,000, but I'd record it in brackets because it has a negative impact on cash flow. Remember that downward arrow in that uh, graphic I showed on the last slide. Then I had a decrease in inventories of 8,000. That has a positive impact on cash flow. I have a decrease in accounts payable. So that means I paid this year's bills and some of last year's stuff. So that's a negative impact on cash flow of 3,200. An increase in accrued expenses payable. So increases have the opposite impact, 2,200. 
and then it decreased in income tax payable. That means I paid this year's income taxes and some of what I owed from last year. So that's a negative 500. So I add all those numbers up and that's going to give me the net cash flow from operating activities. So remember, when we look at the changes in current operating assets and liabilities, we, we ignore cash at that point because we're going to solve for cash at the end of this uh, statement here. So that's enough for you to do the first assignment. And again, I will post a, a practice video of doing one of those problems. So this uh, becomes a bit more clear. And again, we'll do a bunch of these before the end of this chapter. So uh, if you don't get it right now, if it seems a little bit confusing, trust me, you'll, you'll get it when we're done with the chapter. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out by email or by phone. Uh, happy to chat with you. Bye bye.